What's up, everybody? It's a wake up war chant presented by Vitamin Energy. It's also maybe a breakout video on YouTube, everybody. All you recruit nicks, you obsessive, put it in my veins. I need more, I need more recruiting. Michael Langston's here to set the stage, everybody. Again, use the promo code FSU1. I think that gets you two months of premium access for only one dollar. Michael Langston here. My Twitter feed is still going nuts. I imagine Matt is over at campus right now. I mean, it's what a nonstop weekend for you guys. Oh, yeah. Nonstop. Uh, started it at around 9 a.m. Ended probably around 6.30 p.m. Something like suck. that. A uh, uh, lot, of, lot of stuff going on. Official visitors, nine of them. And then you had the elite camp with probably around 55 to 60 talent mostly underclassmen 2026 kids mostly 2026 but a lot of really premier talent um you know that i think it was fsu knew like they're probably going to do another one in july so the 2025 class they can get in for july and then and then this one they really hammered down on the underclassmen but yeah pretty busy day all right let's get to it let's go to the ovs as the kids like to say michael official <laughs> visits you know, for as much grief as one of the coaches gets on the other side of the football, one of the dudes on the offensive side of the football continues to bring in elite guys and puts together a really good segment. Uh, Max Buchanan, 6'4 and a half ish, 279 pound offensive lineman from Seminole, Sanford, Florida. Mm -hmm. How's that one coming along, big dog? Look, looking good. Uh, I think, it, I think uh, they nailed everything they wanted. A lot of this visit was really about, um, Max is one, his family being there, but two, just Max interacting with a lot of the players. I felt like they, they nailed that pretty hard um, as far as just the bonds around the players and the comfort and then seeing what the, I guess, the, the locker room's like or just uh, what these guys are like outside of football. And I think uh, they really heavily connected. It was already a really good relationship with, with Alex Atkins. That was always there. Same thing with Mike Dorbell with, with Max. I think it was really just getting a feel – for the inside of the program, being there, seeing the daily things they do, uh, sitting in um, team meetings, you know, player, you know, council where you where you get a chance to really pick these guys' brains, and I think they nailed it, uh, you know, pretty pretty strongly. You know, with Max, I feel pretty good about you know where FSU sits in that recruitment. All right, um, moving along then for the Knowles, uh, obviously more than just one dude out there on official visit. Uh, how about the young man Clardy, uh, Ladarian Clardy? Yeah, uh, defensive back. Obviously, uh, Patrick Sertan knows what he's doing over there. Uh, yeah. Just how vital was it to get him on campus? What kind of impression do you think Florida State was able to make on him? I mean, it was vital because the right when they he was one of the as of all the guys, he was one of the most recent offers they made. Kid immediately set up an official visit, so you could tell like, okay, he's pretty serious about FSU. He loves him. He's from Pensacola, Florida. Um, shout out. Jonathan Daniels and uh, Darius Washington, both from that area. So that, that certainly helped the comfort factor. And then two, um, just this one's really sped up a lot uh, with FSU just uh, being there. And I think people can, you know, watch the interview we did with him. I mean, he was, he was just smiling from year to year the whole time. Uh, they really knocked it out of the park. And I think a lot of it was the, the comfort and connection that he had with, with those players hanging out with, you know, a lot of those DBs like Conrad Hussey, all the newcomers that came in, uh, he really just bonded from the start. They they took him in right in, and um, now FSU sitting in a, a pretty strong spot. I know on threes, uh, Chad Simmons and uh, Steve Wilfong both put in a pick today for FSU. I would agree with that pick. I, I've been out there all day, so I hadn't had a chance to make a pick, but I'm pretty confident I will also follow suit uh, with a pick in there based on – I told Matt when I leaned there to Matt, I was like, yeah, that one looks pretty good for FSU there. Um, so, you know, certainly a top DB. His nickname is Squirrel, uh, by the way, Aslan. That's that's mm -hmm. what, what's what most people call him. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, that's kind of his nickname. And I could tell just what I got from my FSU intel. This was a guy that was very vital that they wanted. So I knew there was going to be a strong push. I put up there late Saturday night, did a few nuggets of what I'm hearing, and it was really positive about the impact that that this visit has made. Um, and I think uh, now they're sitting in the in the pole position and and looking really good. He Mississippi State uh, is another team he mentioned that you know he he would likely visit. We'll see if he takes any more visits. I'm not sure he I'm not sure if that's set in stone, but 
Um, we'll see uh, where it goes from there, but I think I think they're sitting pretty pretty good. Six foot one seventy. Is he still projecting to you as a safety? Do you think of the next level? Yeah, I think he's a safety that can also play corner if you want him to, but um, certainly uh, seems to be a safety more than anything when I watch his game. But um, just a terrific talent that they they really fell in love with and they watched their film and really ever since they they checked he checked off all the boxes on on the film study. I think FSU has been pushing really hard uh for this class and the, and the safety position is the one that they want to i think load up on they want to get two or three guys in there so i think uh it was a big deal you know putting their best foot forward and really making a strong impression and putting themselves in a good spot with uh ladarian i can't believe we're gonna we're gonna talk about this guy we're gonna we're gonna talk about zion grady he's from alabama um it looks like he's <laughs> at enterprise high school now i thought he was over at charles henderson out there in troy maybe yeah. he, uh, he transferred but he decommitted uh, that's news to me but you know me, you know me, Michael, when it comes to Alabama dudes, Mississippi dudes, like you, you got to wake me up on signing day, but uh, <laughs> that's six, four, 225 pound edge. He's, he's worth it, man. He's worth the shot. Um, how much of an impact do you think Florida State was able to make on this weekend official? Yeah. Coming into the visit, um, <clears throat> Steve Wilfong had said like FSU, he felt like FSU was the favorite in checking with my guys, even after this visit, they kind of felt a similar, you know, feeling and vibe that, you know, FSU was, you know, in the best position. You mentioned development a lot. That's that's a big part of his recruitment. We know JP and in that defensive line staff uh, do, do a phenomenal job. That's something FSU excels at. Uh, you know, Zion even said like, "Dude, they're putting two or three guys in the league like every year." So it's like, you know, they have no problem with what they're doing. Talked about his comfort level, feeling at home there. That's that different. I asked them what was kind of different about FSU, and he, he mentioned that the comfort level was just just really different when he's there um, had a big smile when he talked about Norvell. So there's such a, a strong connection, not just with JP, but also, you know, Norvell and, you know, you still have to go through the rest of the process. I think Ohio state is a team that I'm kind of eyeing to see, uh, you know, how he feels after that one. Um, but if he takes an official there, but I uh, know he's officially visited Miami, but you now for me, I just, I'd look at Ohio state when you see what they do with defensive linemen, that's still a team you got to keep notice, but I think FSU has done the best job from the start recruiting this kid and showing, you know, what their product is and what they do. And I think it's just connected in a strong way with him. Uh, I think, I think really if they land this kid, Aslan's going to be a lot of what they've done in development in the last two or three years. Cause this kid's really, really high on that. And this weekend he got a chance to just, feel the brotherhood of what FSU is since he hasn't experienced that totally. But uh, those are some things that he really, you know, harped on and, and connected with throughout the visit. Well, shoot, Michael, much, much like link Jarrett's got me believing in the boys uh, in baseball. You got me believing the Florida state's got a real shot. This Zion Grady kid. Uh, and speaking of baseball in Omaha, yeah. how about Millard South product, Chase Lofton, uh, Florida state go. going into the Cornhusker state trying to pull some top end talent, six, five and a half, 213 pound tight end. Good looking young man. There offers on the RPM or rather that is predictions. Yeah. Uh, old big eight, big 12 country. Now a lot of uh, sec programs. You see Missouri, you see Oklahoma on there. Just how legitimate, how real is the pursuit for Florida state and chase Lofton? I think it's very real. Um, his brother, I think he said the plays at Kansas state. Um, he obviously lives in Nebraska. So, you know, you know, they're certainly in the picture, but he kind of gave some signs like, like stuff like, Hey, my brother hardly ever goes home. So it's like playing at home is not as important as being, getting the right fit. So you could tell he's kind of fading away from that where it's not as big a, a, th a deal. I do think FSU is the leader now uh, for Chase Lofton. Um, I think they're leading. I think uh, they're, they're in a great spot. Our, our Steve Wolfong uh, from Montre also reported that he he felt FSU was the leader. Um, so that's certainly the the one for that one. Um, <laughs> you know, this weekend, Aslan, I wasn't really focused so much on you know what he saw, but what Mom saw, what the family saw. Because when you're going that far away from Nebraska to Tallahassee, Florida, uh, I think that was the real key for me. And I think I think they nailed it with with the family. Uh, family loved it. Uh, there was a connection where they felt like, okay, we're comfortable if he went here. 
you know, if he went here, we we could check off on that and sell off on that and say, hey, we feel good here. But we'll see what happens uh, for the rest of the official visits. It does seem like he mentioned that he wants to uh, decide. I think he said either June or, or early July. So it feels like that one's coming soon. And I, I know from an FSU side perspective, I, I do think they feel good about really solid about how how things uh developed throughout the weekend uh with with chase and and their recruitment of him so you know some pretty good news uh already uh for fsu from these official visits all right the Knowles already got a chroman hawk in the fold what, what about what about chroma what about whatever our guy big o o's main uh, what do we think about that one michael i'll be honest i was shocked how much he liked it and how much I was hearing good things about the visit. Cause I had already FSU started fading away, uh, but didn't feel like, Hey, this is going to happen. I know the RPM doesn't back that up, but they have been fading away in this recruitment. They've had a hard time getting him on campus. They finally got him there this weekend and he brought the most family I've ever seen on, on an official visit, uh, uh, tons of family and friends uh, that were with him and I've heard some good, you know, positive stuff of FSU is actually a, a real factor. I do think Georgia, probably the biggest competition, um, but I think Auburn is also in there. But I think FSU, from a a playing style fit uh, point of view, is the is the best fit of of just his game because he's really good as a receiver. <clears throat> we know he's a powerful runner, and certainly he's got a lot of speed and. But I think FSU really made a good, sizable jump uh, this weekend. I'm not going to call them for sure leader, but I think now, I, before this, I was like, hey, they're fading away. It's probably not going to happen, probably a long shot. But after this visit, I would say now they're back strongly in the mix into the picture. So they're they're going to be a heavy player for for Usman and, and the rest of the way. And he plans to come back for a, another uh, a game or something, uh, something like that effect. And then um, – just did an unbelievable job, just not just uh, showing him the fit, but also, you know, their VR program that really jumped out to him, just uh, strength and conditioning stuff they do with storms and a lot of different factors that, you know, maybe not people think about on a visit uh, that really just connected with him, but just also the feeling he gets when he's around the staff is, as as Usman said, it's different when, he, when he's here and he, the feeling he gets, so... We'll see if they can keep the momentum going. I'm not gonna chalk up like, hey, they're strongly gonna, you know, pull it out. I'm 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 gonna wait a week or so. I wanna see how he feels if if that feeling is still there. Uh, you know, for me to say, hey, they're one of the top schools and favorites, but they made a, a major push and major strides this weekend with Usman, there's no doubt. Number five running back according to us here at on three consensus, number four back in the class of twenty five, six foot half inch, 215 pounds. Michael, before we let you go, first off, hit the thumbs up, everybody. <laughs> um, but I, everyone's going to hear, oh, wow, like they're in the lead for all these guys. Uh, like when the commitment's going to start coming. Uh, we may able to get that on a different thing, but I, I kind of want you maybe to touch on a little bit about the fact that I know there's still a long way to go, but you know, all you can do is get these kids on campus, have them come for an official visit, and then after that, have them say that you're in the lead. I guess after that, it's just it's anybody's game. So that it pretty seems like they've done all they kind of could of this coaching staff this weekend. Yeah, I think decisions are coming. I think probably two or three of these guys are going to be in this class. Um, I would say that officially visit this weekend. It uh, could be more, but that's what I have right now. I think the commits will come. Uh, but these kids, uh, very rarely does a kid visit in June or, or you know June and just say, "Hey, I'm committed right now." You know, but I do think there's two or three in there that I do feel you will know, likely be a part of this class based on what I have. But uh, I think people need to understand, like, it's not about the moment now. It's about what you get when they actually make that decision. So I definitely think they've positioned themselves and they got stuff done of you needed to hear the stuff about clarity, clarity. You needed to hear the stuff about Grady. You need to hear stuff about Max and Usman and, and all these guys of, of them making a surge for a lot of these guys, you know, they needed to do that to even position themselves to, to pull it off since some of them still have visits left. But I think overall uh, a very productive and positive weekend based on the Intel we already have uh, from this 
from this official visit weekend. But I, I know people are going to want commits. So they're like, hey, they got four. and we even now, They want them now. But it's like decisions are going to come, guys. It just doesn't happen like right on that weekend. Yeah. yeah this June month, everyone's going and getting getting all their visits in. Yeah. July, yeah. they'll take some time off and figure it all out. So we yeah. uh, we wait. Until then, go to Warchant.com, premium recruiting board. Uh, again, FSU one, two, two months, one dollar, everybody. Get all the information you want, or go check our Warchant Twitter page, which just good lord, man. Just clips galore of dudes in elite camps, yeah. class of 26, all these, all these future knolls we certainly hope down the line. Uh, certainly hope to talk to you down the line once again, Michael Langston. Thanks for taking time out, buddy. You got it.